as there is in our Western democracies. Islam is a legal, political, and religious system, all in one, taking its authority solely from the Quran and from what Muhammad did and said in his life, and all is interpreted by its clerics. Islam means submission to the will of Allah, as revealed by Muhammad, and in its most virulent Islamist form, aims to take over the planet, as did communism and other forms of fascism. There are, alas, a great many verses in the Quran, however you translate them, and much that Muhammad did and said, which justify violence towards non-believers. It is therefore wrong to describe Islam as a religion of peace, as intoned by our political leaders and bien pensant commentators in response to whatever the latest Islamist, uh, Islamist atrocity may be. What they mean is that the vast majority of the many millions of Muslims on this earth live peaceful and good lives, as indeed they do. But that isn't the same thing at all. And the odd thing is that if we try to talk about any of this, we are immediately accused of stirring up religious hatred. Yet most of us do not hate Islam. We may fear it, but all the hatred is in the breast of the Islamist, and it flows only in one direction, against us, the non-believers. Let me give you a recent example. You may have seen the two British jihadists who murdered a British soldier, drummer Rigby, on the streets of Woolwich some 18 months ago. They gave a bystander a handwritten note, which was produced at their trial and of which I have a copy. In that note, they quote no less than 22 verses of the Quran to justify their action. Last November, we debated in the Lords the failure of our security services to prevent that atrocity, which our Prime Minister duly parroted was, and I quote, a betrayal of Islam. I have been described by two Muslim Labour MPs as diabolic for, ch for challenging the accurate accuracy of that platitude and for suggesting that our government should encourage our peaceful Muslim community to address the violence in the Quran and in what Muhammad said and did. I, um, I have, of course, challenged the MPs to a public debate, but answer come there, comes there none. That was all I did. I just said that our government should get our peaceful community to address the violence in the Quran, uh, and all hell was let loose on the left. And ladies and gentlemen, we, we have to get rid of another silly one, and it's this. Oh, but there's a lot of violence in the Bible too. Well, Jehovah does indeed smite the uncircumcised quite a bit in the Old Testament, but I am not aware that Orthodox Jews are killing tens of thousands of people on the strength of it. But the New Testament and Christianity's founder are entirely good and nonviolent. So I, I don't think we want to rise this one of the Bible being as violent as the Quran. And, and even so, we shouldn't hide from the bloodshed, which has come from within Christianity over the centuries. The Hundred Years' War, a spot of bother, bother across the pond, the Soviet Revolution, two world wars, the Holocaust and more all erupted from within Christianity, but not today. Today, the collective dark side of human nature appears to be moving most strongly within Islam. Islam now has the religious fervor and energy, and I don't think we have much chance of standing up to it unless we start by recognizing it for what it is. I'll leave the military side to you people. But personally, I think we have to start by talking openly about Islam amongst ourselves and trying to draw our peaceful Muslim friends into that debate. In the end, only the vast majority of peaceful Muslims can deal with their violent minority. The problem is that they don't have to engage with us. All they have to do is sit there and say that the jihadists misinterpret the Quran and that Quran is a religion of peace. And here I leave you with another very worrying Muslim tenet, al-Hijra. This enjoins Muslims to follow Muhammad's example after he moved to Medina and accepted his host's hospitality until he was strong enough to send them into exile or kill them 
if they didn't convert to his new religion. And he killed quite a lot. You may have read about the Islamic takeover of many of our schools in Birmingham. One of those schools, ladies and gentlemen, is called the Al-Hijra School. So the tenet is alive and well in Birmingham and in many of our other cities. Of course, luckily for you, Islam is not so well entrenched with you as it is with us and in other European countries. You don't need to end up in our predicament. So please don't. As for us in Europe, all we can do is to start at least talking about Islam amongst ourselves with our peaceful Muslim friends. Let, let us hope that they will engage with us. Or will they just become fellow travelers on their way to al Hijra? Since reform can only come from within Islam, let us hope they will assert their dominance over their tiny, violent minority. We are constantly told that this minority is so tiny. What is the great majority doing, is what I want to know. They could, for instance, call a great Muslim council and declare that true Islam flows only from the peaceful verses of the Quran, and that the violent verses are to be internalized as the struggle between good and evil in each one of us. They could cast the jihadists out of Islam. Will they? Uh, I'm not so sure, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we can but hope that they stand firm and do something like that. But I fear they won't. Let us see if they prove me wrong. Thank you. Well, Pearson, thank you. <clears throat> um, we will be talking, I'm sure, in the...